Hello, welcome back. This is James Uriah from Workship. Today I'm going to talk about dynamic panel. I think um, some of our prototype that we developed today, dynamic panel are really very important. And I'm going to show you how to do this in actual RP. Um, first of all, let's look at dynamic panel because everything we do on a development point of view, either mobile app or web application, it's all about content and displaying this content maybe from a database or displaying some static content but having different types of content which are going to be displayed in a in a location so dynamic panel are something like that you kind of have different content but this content are going to be displayed in the same location on your web site or your mobile app and things that dynamic panel are used for are things like banners. Um, if you are on a, if you are on an e-commerce platform and you are developing a prototype, you will be using dynamic panel for things like uh, displaying product information, displaying banners, uh, you know, and you'll be displaying a lot of things that has to do with um, getting content out from maybe your databases and things like that, and your, you know kind of interaction if you want to make an interaction your login screen you want to make them pop up and things like that these are things that you are going to use um, you, you're going to be able to achieve using dynamic panels and uh, let me just show you example what dynamic panels can be used for in a in a website so um, if we look at this website for example it's an online marketplace um, and if we look at the, the content on this site are different, we are not seeing um, the same content. If we look at this banner, for example, we have two banners and then we have two types of content showing within the banner in a sliding um, scenario. So if you look at that, that is what dynamic panel could be used for. You know, things that are not, stat um, that are not statics, are what dynamic panels are used for within a website if we try to check let's say view our product for example and we see this pop up right now these are things that dynamic panel can be used for in Azure. so when you want to develop your prototype dynamic panel are very important um, aspect of the wireframing tool that you need to understand and implementing it in a better way and managing it properly is very uh, important as well. So I'll just show you in this tutorial how to implement dynamic panel. Um, I'm not going to show you how to develop a full blown prototype that will look exactly like this website, but I'll just show you what dynamic panels are, how you can make them and how you can make um, the most out of them. So we, in this tutorial, we're going to create um, a simple banner using the dynamic panel and of course this technique can be um, adapted to different types of scenario in terms of your dynamic panel requirement you know also dynamic panel can be used for things like application forms you know when you want to um, make um, an application form and you have several pages or several fields that's going to be displayed within one application form and you want the user to be able to click maybe next and back section and to move forward from one uh, one section of the application to another section of the application. Dynamic panel are really important in this aspect because they give you the opportunity to be able to move from one page to another page without having probably to refresh the page. So if, if you look at um, jQuery, you kind of think dynamic panel in that aspect so let's get started and the um, first thing we need to open is azure we've add azure so what we need to do is we want to make a simple um, dynamic panel and we want to make use of a a banner or yeah just a simple banner so we're just gonna i'll use a placeholder here i'm just gonna drop a placeholder here and i'm gonna say let's call this um 960 and uh, let's make this I'll just make this uh, red and then remove this border so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna let's get another um, 
section here and put it at the top here. And let's say 960 as well. Let's make this one. Let's just make it uh, really like this. And we're going to say this is header. On a website, you're going to have things like this header. I'm just going to change this color to white and increase the form to 24. Yeah. And then we're going to call this banner. And. Uh, we're going to change the font as well and uh, maybe increase it to 24 and change the color to white. So what we need to do next is once we've done this, we, we want to make this section of the banner um, dynamic because obviously we want to have maybe four different images that uh, talks about our product on, on our website. So we're going to have... Um, this banner we're going to transform it into dynamic panel and to simply do that we're going to right click and move to convert to dynamic panel once we convert to dynamic panel you see this banner kind of change in terms of you can't really see the color properly there's a layer over over it now which shows that in a dynamic panel has been created now we need to move to the widget manager and see that the dynamic panel has been created and like I said in my previous tutorial, it is advisable, it is a good practice to always name your dynamic panel so that when you edit them, you can understand what your dynamic panels are doing, where they are, where if you want to find them. Because if your prototype becomes so, so big with hundreds of pages, you want to know which dynamic panel is which when you are making your interactions with them. So the next thing we're going to do is to make sure that we change the name of this dynamic panel and we're just going to, we can just have um, a click on this once and we can change it. But the best way is double click and we have this uh, dynamic panel state manager window pop up. Now this state manager just simply means that, you know, uh, we have a banner and within this banner, we're going to have several images that will be displayed within this banner container. So the state, you know, uh, is similar to the uh, different banner that we're going to, um, different images that we're going to put inside this banner container. So we can have as many states as we want, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just gonna limit it to, to three states. And obviously, best practice in a website, you're not going to have more than two or three uh, banner as well. So what I'm going to do now is to have this. We're going to call this banner. And once we have that as banner, what we need to do next is to make sure that um, we change the state name as well because if we are trying to make an interaction we want to know which state we want to display either first or second or last and then what we need to do next is to give each of the states a name so i'm just going to call this banner one and i'm going to call this banner two I'm just click it twice i'm going to call this banner three and then this banner holder, I'm just going to make it say banner holder. And then we click OK. As we've seen, the changes has been reflected here. But another thing we need to consider is because of we are, we've always um, converted to dynamic panel, the state is going to be referencing one state first. And the design that we've had here is going to reflect only on one state. It's not going to reflect on all the states that we create additional so what we need to do is to make sure that we get this same design into the third state and then we can manipulate it the way we want to do so what we need to do now is to go to the banner one and then we need to um copy this and open banner two and paste it open banner three and paste it as well once we've done that we're not going to save it once we've done this we go back to the home page and then we can add our um, which yeah, our interaction. Now to make our interaction on 
on our banner, we need to go to the widget and interaction notes section. And we're going to say, okay, what do we want this banner to do? Do, do we want it to um, slide or, you know, change on page load or on click? Or, so it depends on how we want to do it. So it will be advisable to have it both on click and on page load so that user can, you know, can change it if they want or the user can leave it and the page just slides like we have in this website, you know, the, the page the slider is just moving without clicking it also the user can click as well which gives a bit of um but what we're just going to do is to make sure that this page changes on page load and we can see the changes going from banner one to banner two to banner three so what we're going to do next is because we've convert this to dynamic panel another thing we could do is we could make this um banner fill the old screen and then that's it so um what we need to do next is to say on page load we need to make sure that the banner move to um the banner one banner two banner three and continuously so i'm just gonna click on page load and i'm gonna go through the dynamic panel section and say set panel state now we are setting the panel state and say okay once this page loads what state do we want this banner to be at do we want the banner to be in the state one or second state or third state so what we need to do now is to click this set banner which we've already defined here banner holder we've selected it and we said the select state we can either select it one after the other but because we are doing on page load we're just going to make it to next and next and next and next then it's going to be okay it's going to be moving to next and next and next and then we move like that so what we need to do next is to say maybe repeat after some seconds as well and also how do we want it to change do we want it to fade or slide left or right or anyhow we want it to slide i'll just put um slide left right now um and then we click ok now what we need to do to make sure that this banner is really changing based on the page load we need to make sure that we have something to show that we are on the right state so we're just going to call this banner 2 and we're going to call this banner 3 so now what we need to do is to preview this page on a browser All right, I think I don't know my internet might be down it shouldn't it shouldn't be based on internet connection anyway so I'm not sure why it's very it's very slow I'm just going to save this as test just for just for the purpose of explaining I'm going to save it as text and then I'm going to preview this yeah now we've said on page load the banner should change from slide 1 to slide 2 and then it changes from slide 1 slide 2 slide 3 what well, we just need to we just need to adjust it a little bit and say wrap from last to first so that it starts all over again i believe and uh, what we need to do now is to refresh this page and it's changing from slide one slide two slide three slide one slide two slide three and the changes just keep continuing like that so it's like in a programming you know it's in a loop so as long as the page is loaded it will just continue this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever for infinity so that is uh, how we just we can implement this using actual rp i hope you've been able to learn one or two things um in this tutorial how to implement dynamic panel using sliders and making it and making your banner um slide from left to right and things like that so it's very easy to do <clears throat> if you understand how dynamic panel works 
the thing that you need to consider is naming your banner or your your dynamic panel giving it a state naming all your state and applying any type of interaction you want to apply to it as well we can make this fade we can make it slide up and down depending on our requirements i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial it's a short one and i hope to see you in the next tutorial thank you very much for watching don't forget to leave a comment below if you have any question i'll be glad to answer them once again thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial bye